Hi folks, it's good to be with you again. We're going to continue on our uh, journey through the scriptures, looking at understanding the Bible. And we're going to look at a, 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 an event which took place in Numbers chapter 21, uh, in verse 5. It's an interesting subject because it's spoken personally. Um, the Lord Jesus spoke personally about this event, about himself. And he speaks on a couple of occasions in the New Testament. So it's an interesting subject. The first time he speaks about it, he says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And so he refers to himself in that way. He also says um, in John, John's Gospel again, chapter 12, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. So the subject is personal to the Lord Jesus, but it happened long, long time before he ever came into the world. It's also an interesting subject because it's an up-to-date thing in our world as well, in that the British Medical Association uses the, um, the motif, you might say, of a serpent on a pole um, in their in their headed paper, or at least they did. So there's, there's links to all of us in a sense. Let's read the story and just see what it says to us. Chapter uh, 21 of the book of Numbers and verse 5. And this people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither uh, is there any water. And our soul loatheth this light bread. Uh, and the, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And, so, and Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it on a pole, and it came to pass that if the serpent had bitten anyone, th th when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. So it's, a, it's an interesting story, isn't it? It's, a, it's an interesting story about the um, behaviour of man, men and the behaviour of God and the response of God to their behaviour. Uh, so basically the story is, as we've read, that the people sinned against God. They, they were ungrateful in a sense. They, they looked at what uh, and said, why have you brought us out? They were desperate to be out of Egypt. They said, why have you brought us out of Egypt? Uh, we, we, we don't have any water here. We don't have any bread here. Uh, and this bread that you've provided for us, the manna, uh, uh, we, we've become sick of it. We don't want it anymore. Um, and in a sense, God righteously was was uh, unhappy with their uh, behaviour, with their thinking. Uh, and but you know, remarkably, God could quite easily have said, "Well, you know, um, we'll just leave you to it. If that's what you want, you stay in the wilderness, or go back to, to Egypt and enjoy what you had in Egypt with taskmasters and so on." Um, and that's fine. But he didn't. He was very gracious to them, in a sense. But first of all, what they realised was God, God had to uh, instruct them in some way. He had to get them to realise that they were sinners. Uh, and we, we find something about God here that quite often when he wants to speak to us, he uses something which will make us pay attention. Um, there's a story in the New Testament about a man who was a jailer uh, and he put two of the, uh, the, the preachers of the gospel in the, in the jail. Uh, and God needed to speak to him. And he spoke to him through an earthquake. Uh, and so it was quite, a, quite an, a, an amazing story. But you know, on this occasion, God doesn't speak through an earthquake. He speaks through fiery serpents or uh, biting snakes, poisonous snakes. And the snakes come in amongst the people of the camp. Uh, and they began to die because of these snakes. And then the people realised they had done wrong and uh, they, they understood 
that uh, they had to do something about it. And so they they asked Moses to get before God and ask him to deal with that situation. And God, in such a gracious way, says, OK, what I'll do is we'll make a, a serpent of brass and put it on a pole and whoever looks at the serpent will be healed. And so th that's exactly what happened. Now, interestingly, God doesn't say that the people had to make serpents of their own. He doesn't say they had to do any great work. He doesn't say they had to uh, be uh, very special in any particular way. All they had to do was look. You can imagine somebody who is dying of a snake bite. Uh, and Moses had said possibly, well, uh, God says what you've got to do is you've got to make something uh, special for him. You've got to go and do a day's work for him. You've got to go and give some money to somebody for him. Uh, and that would have, that will suffice. But God didn't do that. Because these people wouldn't have been able to do that. They were bitten by serpents and they were dying. And so God says, all I need you to do is tell the people if they look at the serpent of brass, they'll be healed. And the simplicity of this story is this, that whatever God said, they all, all they needed to do was believe what he said and do what he asked. And that's exactly what the people did. Whenever they were bitten, they looked at the serpent of brass and they were healed. But you can imagine an individual who said, I don't like God's way. I'd rather have some other way. I, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can find a doctor. Um, uh, and he would have possibly sought to find a doctor who could heal. And he would have found no one who was able to heal him of this disease that he had from the bitten, being bitten by the serpent. The poison was going through his body and it was impossible. And he would have died because of that because he didn't want to accept God's way. And so the Lord Jesus in the New Testament tells us a very similar thing. What he says is, in a sense, each one of us has been bitten by serpent. We've been bitten by Satan. In other words, we're sinners. Uh, and we need to have that sin dealt with. And he says, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And so he's, he likens himself to a serpent, to the serpent on the pole, the only way of salvation. And, and to these people in the desert, in the wilderness, uh, so many years before, the brass serpent was the only way of salvation. There was no other way. And they had to believe that. And those who did were made whole. Those who did were healed. And that's exactly the same with the Lord Jesus. Exactly the same. The Lord Jesus was lifted up from the earth. He was lifted up on the cross. And the Bible tells us he is the only way of salvation. There is no other way. And if we need to have our sins cleansed, if we need to get right with God, if we need to deal with the sin in our lives, we need to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ personally. For ourselves, and all he says, in a sense, is, "Look, believe what I say. Simple thing, just believe what I say, and accept what I've got to say, and that's enough. Come to the Lord Jesus for salvation." There's a note verse in the Old Testament, in the Book of Isaiah, uh, and it just says, "Look unto me, all ye ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else." And so, that is exactly the story that the Lord Jesus was giving all those years ago. He reminded the people of the, the sins of their forefathers and how they were dealt with. And he reminds the people of his day that he was able to save from sin and from the consequences of sin. The, not the physical death, but the eternal death which will come about by uh, being a sinner. But it's possible today for you in this generation to have that very same salvation, to have that very same uh, knowledge of sins forgiven and to be healed and to be made right with God. And not necessarily in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense uh, and to become one of the family of God. How many blessings and benefits we are brought into when we come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Saviour. And you can find that. You can have that salvation today. The people in, these day, in that day were given a choice. 
the people in this day are given a choice. Will you accept God's way of salvation through the cross of the Lord Jesus, through the blood that he shed at Calvary's cross? Will you take him as your saviour? Just like the people, in a sense, took the, the uh, serpent as their saviour. They looked at the serpent and they were healed. Well, I'm asking you today, and the Bible is asking you, as God is asking you, to look towards his son, the Lord Jesus, and accept him as your saviour, personally, for yourself. Will you do that today? We hope that you will and pray that you'll accept the Lord Jesus now. Thank you for listening.